All right, so this is section 4-8. Yesterday we talked about when we multiply common bases, we add the exponents. Today we are looking at our objective is division and exponents, negative exponents, and zero exponents. So we've got a lot to cover. So when we divide the opposite of multiplying, we're going to also do the opposite operation with the exponents, and we're going to subtract the exponents. Pause the recording if you need to write these notes. So instead of x to the eighth divided by x to the fifth, we're going to subtract the eighth power minus the fifth power to get x to the third power. Pause the recording if you need to write this. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> okay, so if I have something like x to the eighth, or let's make it smaller. Let's do x to the fourth over x squared. Let's expand this out and really talk about what's happening. Okay. If I expanded this, this would mean x times x times x times x. You with me? And if I have the bottom one, I have x times x. What if I divide out common factors? How many common factors can we divide out? Um, Sergio, two. two. So if I'm dividing them out, look, when I cross cancel, what am I left with? When I cross that out, am I, is that a zero? What's left there when I cross out that x? One. I'm left with a one and I'm left with a one. And when I cross cancel here, I'm left with a 1 and a 1. So in the numerator now, what I'm left with is 1 times 1 times x times x, which is what? What? x. What? How would I write that? x squared. I'm left with x squared. In the denominator, I'm left with a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And when every number, every whole number goes over 1, so this really leaves me with just x squared. Now, let's take away, let's look at, so here's method number one, how to divide with common bases. Method number two, I told you was a shortcut. We say x to the fourth power since it's division, we're subtracting, and what do we get? What do I get? X squared. And then method number three, which is what I use in algebra and is what you need to be able to do by the end of this. We start doing this. In, we, it's closer to what this is. But you'll see, I just go x to the fourth, x squared. And what I say to myself is, what is the greatest amount of x's I can divide out of top and bottom, of numerator and denominator? What's the greatest amount of x's? How many, Abby? Two. Two. So I can divide an x squared out of the denominator, and I'm left with one the number one, because any number divided by itself is one, and when I divide out two x, x's here, what are we left with in the numerator? x squared, right? And so now I'm left with x squared over one, which equals x squared. Okay. Okay, so now let's try this. I want you to try a couple of these and practice them. Um, so let's go with number one. Let's do x to the fifth over x cubed. And let's try this one. x to the, to the seventh over x to the twelfth. Okay. Pause the recording and do the next two problems. 
Okay, so now I'm going to say number one. What's the greatest amount of x's we can divide out of numerator and denominator? What did you guys say? Three. x to the third. I can take three x's. When I divide out x to the third in the numerator, I'm left with an x squared. When I divide it out of the denominator, I'm left with one. So that's x squared over one, which is equal to x squared. All right, next one. What's the greatest amount of x's we can divide out? Lilith. I can divide x to the seventh out of the numerator and out of the denominator. Remember, if I were to expand it, it would be just x's all the way on top, seven of them, and 12 on the bottom. So when we divide the numerator, what's left? One. I'm left with a one. And when I divide it out of the denominator, how many are left, Lilith? Five. And so what's my final answer here? One x to the power of negative five? No. Well, OK. What's my final answer, um, Olivia? One over x to the fifth power. Perfect. Yes. One over, which you're actually right what you said. But I don't know if you understand that. Okay, so I'm left with one over x to the fifth. Questions? Okay, if I were to do the other way, and we do x to the seventh over x to the twelfth. Remember, it's going to be x to the top minus the bottom, which is x to the negative what? Fifth power. Is that how you did it, Lilith? And these, in fact, are equivalent. Sorry, these are equivalent. One over x to the fifth is equivalent to x to the negative 5 power. Okay, questions? All right, let's try another. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay, now let's talk about... Okay, so now if I'm dividing x to the 4th power by x to the 4th power... I'm going to expand it out, and here's what I have. If I cross cancel, what am I left with there when I cross cancel those? What am I left with? One. Now let's use the shortcut method. X to the fourth power, instead of dividing, what do I really do with my exponents? What do we do, guys? Subtract, and we are left with um, x to the, oh, sorry, zero power. So what does x to the zero power really equal? One. Not zero, it equals one. So anytime you get an x to the zero power, it will equal one. Yes. No, x is different than 1. x is not always 1. Because if x is a 5, and 5 to the 5th power minus 5 to the 5th power is 5 to the 5 minus 5 power, which would be 5 to the 0 power equals 1. Because when you're, we're doing the equations like x to the 5th power and then times x to the at just x, we do x to the sixth. That's x to the first power. That's not x to the zero power. If an x is written, that's to the first power. This is x to the zero power equals the number one. So if let's say, what if the value of x is five? Then what we have x is five? If x is, okay, if x is five, let's say x equals five. Then x squared, what does that equal? 10. I mean, 125. Okay. And x to the first power, what does that equal? 5. 5. And then x to the zero power equals 1. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So anything to the zero power is equal to 1. So let's try this. 
Okay, so now you guys try the next group here. And don't let me forget to take it off. Pause. Okay, number one. Shh. Yes, it equals one. Number two. Number two. David. One. Good. Number three. Michaela. One. Yep. The base of that exponent. Josh, you've got it. Okay. Okay, number four. Tati. One. one. Number five. Select few. Sarah. One. You got that, girl. Why is that negative one? Why is it negative one? Sarah? This is like a negative one here. The base of that exponent is only the eight. Here, the base is the parentheses, so everything in there is to the zero power. But here, only the eight. So that's like a negative one times, um, times one. Eight to the zero power is one. So a negative one times one is one, negative one. And number six, Tati? Yep, one. Okay, now, um, anything to the zero power is always equal to one. Now, negative exponents. Negative exponents can be tricky because they're not really negative numbers. What they are are fractional amounts. Every number, I can put it, so basically here's what you're going to do with a negative number. You're going to take the reciprocal. Now remember, any number goes over 1, right? So what would be the reciprocal of that? If it's x to the negative 1, what do you think the reciprocal would be? Yes. 1 divided by x. Right, and when you, once you reciprocate it, you take the positive value. So one more time, negative exponents are really not negative numbers. They are fractions. All you're going to do is reciprocate it. Okay? Oh, let, wait, stop, stop. Let's do three more. Shh. Just stay with me. My one friend can leave. Shh. Just watch. Okay. So, notice, when I have something like this, I'm going to reciprocate it. It's 1 over 2 to the first power, which equals 1 over 2. Next one. 1 over... 5 to the first power, which equals, now, no, be, it's not the reciprocal for the first power. Yes, it is. One goes on the bottom. This is 1. Yeah, but that's not what you wrote. Abby. Shh. <laughs> I did. Shh, no. She, yes, I did. Okay, now, this one, what's it going to be? 1 over 10 what? To the second power this time. But I take the positive, wait, get, get your eyes. 1 over 100. Okay? 